Hey everyone, welcome to this very special yoga practice. Um, I really needed to do this for myself, and I suppose if I have to do it for myself, chances are there are other people out there who need this. I'm experiencing right now some acute lower back pain due to herniated discs or slip discs, as you might hear them called. And what that does is when the, the vertebrae um, have that cushion between them and that cushion is the disc, when that is going in the wrong direction and not staying where it's supposed to, it's poking out, it presses on nerves like the sciatica nerve and um, can cause extreme pain. So you're probably familiar with some of those terms like sciatica. A lot of people, oh, my sciatica hurts. It's actually about the nerve being impinged. So for today's practice, I have um, what's absolutely necessary is a block, and I like to use a strap. And if you don't have a strap, you could use a scarf or a dog leash, a belt, whatever you have handy. Um, for other options, I also have a lacrosse ball inside a very long sock. And that is um, just for a little bit extra. So. I will explain that once we get down on the floor. So I'm going to start today in hero pose because I really need to release my back after sitting in a chair at my desk for a couple of hours. So I have the block underneath me. If you need to stack two blocks, you can. And just remember that there are different heights so you can work with that and see what kind of base works best for you. I'm just going to take a moment here and I invite you to do so as well. Just allow your body to feel whatever it's feeling. Give yourself permission to just have the emotions that you have or the thoughts that you have. After a couple of breaths, I'm going to invite you to then let those thoughts go. You might be very judgmental towards issues like pain. And, you know, we're human. So just take the time to be angry at it or frustrated and then see if you can let that go and say, okay, well, how am I going to move out of this? How am I going to shift my energy out of this? Um, I can be in pain and still appear perfectly happy. And that's something that a lot of people don't understand. You know, they expect people with um, disabilities or any kind of handicap to look a certain way. You have to look like you're always in agony or you know how dare you walk from your car to the parking space without something like a, de a device like a cane you know it's different every single day different times of the day i woke up feeling great and as soon as i <laughs> tried to meditate in a chair um my body just called it quits so, so after we get some release in a basic posture like heroes um, we're going to come down and however you have to get there get there so if moving directly down to the floor is difficult basically reverse how we normally help ourselves up crawl your way down on the side whichever side is better and then once you get down, you can start to roll over. And from here, you're going to enjoy constructive rest. So my feet are apart and my knees are together. And this allows my thighs to touch. And at the same time, it releases tension from the lum lumbar area, from the, lo the lower back, the pelvis and the glutes because you're not engaging these areas right now you're just letting them be i'm going to present this as the kind of video where you can pause and stay in 
whatever posture you just want to stay in for a while. After you've done some mindful breathing here in constructive rest, I'm going to take the knees a little bit apart so they're about shoulder distance. You can move your feet so that they're also in line. And we're gonna rock the pelvis like we're massaging that sacrum, that triangular or tear-shaped bone at the base of your spine. We're just gonna rock that back and forth without lifting it up. And just gently massage it against the floor. And again, you can keep doing this for as long as you like. And the, the next movement might be extremely difficult. It was for me for a week. Um, we're gonna utilize a block or you can have some thick books underneath you and slide them under. If you can't engage your core at all and lift up, and to slide your prop under. The way I've had to do this is to roll to one side, place the block where I want it, and then roll on top of it. A little rock and roll movement there. And that gets my hips up so that these hip muscles here in the front, the psoas muscle in particular, they're, they're used to moving in this direction a lot when we sit, we're always having that crease here, we want to stretch that muscle out. And this also gives a nice supportive way where we're not doing exercise. We're not doing abdominal core crunches here, which normally you need to do in order to protect the spine. Here we're letting the prop do our work for us. This is a wonderful yin type of practice. So you could stay here in the supported bridge for five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever feels good to you. If you do want to add a little bit of movement to it, you can just rock from side to side, making little windshield wiper movements with the knees. And that also helps massage the joints where it's very typical for what's called the SI joint, sacroiliac joint, to be inflamed, to be quite painful during an episode like this. For the next movements, you can either stay up on the block or you can come off of it. So to come off, you're going to roll to one side, slide it out, and you probably can't see, but I, I'm on top of my other arm just to make an extra little step as my hips come back down to the floor. I'm going to put my block off to the side, and as I said, I like to use a strap you don't have to, but um, it is extremely helpful. I'm gonna work one leg at a time here. So I'm gonna take the, the leg that is primarily being affected by the sciatica nerve on my left side right now. So I'm gonna help my leg in. Whatever it takes, I'm gonna try to get that strap around the ball of my foot. And I'm gonna press out. Now, yesterday, I couldn't even do this in the morning. So um, again, you have to adjust to what feels good. This is really different than two or three days ago. The other leg, for the most support underneath your lower back, keep that leg bent. If you feel okay in your stretch, you can lengthen that other leg. So now you've got a bit of a, an action going on here where you can feel energy moving that way, releasing the psoas on the right, 
and energy of the raised leg. So whichever way you're doing it, I'm going to try to rock that raised leg just a few inches. So we're going up and down. Then we'll pause. I'm going to take the strap in that same hand as the leg that's raised. I'm going to open out. So again, here you can have your knee a little bit bent. We don't need to lock the knees. And I'm just going to hold this. I'm going to bring that leg back up. Now with the hand exactly how it is holding the strap, I'm going to start to bring a bend to this knee and what the action looks like is it looks like my knee is moving towards that armpit area, like towards the floor there. And I'm going to press up through the foot, pull down. So again, your arm can do the work here. So that way it's more passive. Your leg is obviously doing the pressing action, but having that antagonist type of um, action where your foot is pressing one way but your arm is pulling the other can help activate the muscles so that they're healthy. And then I'm going to pull down and hold. And I want you to, to notice that as I slide my opposite leg out, I'm in a half of a happy baby posture. So typically for happy baby, we have both feet up flat towards the ceiling, our knees bent, and maybe holding on to the feet or the ankles. So here, this is a half of a happy baby. I'm gonna release that. I'm gonna slide the other leg back in. I'm gonna then cross my foot over the knee so that way I can reach my strap. And from here, we're going to move into a variation of what's known as pigeon. So we're on our backs, we're facing up towards the sky. And however you need to do it, you can lift that leg that you weren't working before. If you want to put the strap around it, you can and use that for some assistance to pull that leg in. So now the leg, again, I was saying my left leg is more affected by this pain. So I'm getting a stretch through this left side, through the piriformis muscle, which is even further deep below the glutes. So sometimes we call this figure four, sometimes it's reverse pigeon or supine pigeon. There's all different names for this. It's basically a piriformis stretch. I'm going to bring that knee down, the, the foot that's floating. I'm going to let that come down. I'm going to release the strap. And then if it feels comfortable, you're going to put your arms out for support, as a, like a T. And again, inviting very small windshield wiper movements here. We're not doing full twists because with the SI joint, it's not really a twisting motion that helps get out of any pain there. It's really more of a front and back movement. So we're just doing this to give a little massage to that whole sacrum area. We'll come to stillness. We're gonna release that foot down. Now stretch it out and see how you feel in Shavasana or corpse posture. You can make your legs come apart even further and you're in pentacle or butt pointed star starfish posture again all of these shapes have different names a 
to bring both hands back in so that they're up to the sky. So now we're going to do the second leg, even though it's not as inflamed through that joint area. I'm going to bring that knee in however I can in order to loop my strap around it. I'm going to lift that foot with the strap up towards the sky. So again, making the determination here if this other leg is going to stay with the knee up or lengthen it out. And just allow some small rocking motions here. Letting the arms really guide the motion. Then I'm going to pause at the top. I'm going to take the strap in one hand and open that leg out. And I'll lift that leg back up. And now we're going to do that in and out motion, the pendulating through half a happy baby. So bringing the knee in, and you can see my arm is really doing the work here. Pressing up through the foot, pulling it down, pressing it up. And then we're going to keep it raised. I'm going to slide the other foot towards my sits bones. So now my knee on that side is up. I'm going to bend this right leg, take the strap off, and now I'm ready to move into that supine pigeon. Very carefully lifting that leg. So again, if it's not possible to lift that leg, or if you can only do it for a short while, maybe you just want to use a block underneath that foot. And that helps bring this leg, the right leg, in more. Make it easier for yourself. It's totally okay. And I'm just going to move that block out of my way. Bring the foot back to the floor, bring the arms out for support, and do a little bit of windshield wiping side to side action here again. You'll notice that I'm not going all the way over because it's really not necessary for this. And if it feels good to you, they'll do it. And then I'm going to pause, lift that leg up, bring the foot down, see how I feel. Lengthening both legs out. I'm going to move my strap off to the side and see where I am. And you can stay here and enjoy your Shavasana for as long as you like. I'm going to show you how I get up personally. This might be different for everybody. I'm going to bring my feet in so that my knees are bent up to the sky. I'm going to turn onto my right side because that's the side that's feeling no pain as opposed to my left side. When you come down here, you just might need a couple moments to let yourself be. And then I'm going to straighten out my top leg, which is for me is the left. I'm going to use my hands for support and press myself up. Now, if it's okay for you, since you're here and you're in like halfway to tabletop, you can rock over and come right into tabletop. So if it's okay, you can tip the pelvis into cow and lift the chin. And now I'm going to do a little test here. This is going to be my first I'm trying cat stretch in a couple days because I haven't been able to do it. So that's much different than a few days ago. So 
So I'm just going to move through cow and cat a couple times. Just to, for an example, I'll show you what my cat looked like before. I was only able to move my shoulders and my lumbar was totally locked in place. So that was my cat. It didn't, didn't really have much motion in it at all. I'm going to take my knees very wide apart here. My toes come together. And this is an opportunity where you can use a block or a folded up blanket, whatever you want. I'm going to come into child's pose this way because um, it just flattens out that wide area that we had the, the block underneath. And I like to use a block to rest my forehead. When you're ready, you can help yourself upright. I'm going to take that same block, come back into Heroes. And I would basically be done with that practice. I'm going to show you what I use this lacrosse ball for. Now, in um, my if my upper back is feeling a little knot in it, I have this in a long sock, so that way I can lean back against a wall and that way it keeps it in place but the having it in this tube sock helps so that i can actually control where the ball is i'm going to come back down and just like we did for the block i'm going to put this right where i feel a lot of that energy that pain sensation Took a, it really did take a few days before I could even identify whether it was the right or the left side. And I'm just going to put some weight on that lacrosse ball. You can move around if it feels good, or you can just let it press into it. If you know anything about trigger points or neuromuscular therapy, you're probably familiar with this sort of activity. So I'm just going to rock over to the side to release that ball and help myself back up. Now for me, um, the way that I've been getting up, um, the cane's not the most stable, but you know, whether you have a chair next to you or something else to lean on, I've just been using the strength of my legs for the most part. I'm curling my toes and coming into a squat. Now this is something I personally do all the time. So this is not a challenge for me. For other people, this is very hard. So from here, I could use the strength of my legs to ground down through the floor and stand all the way up. Um, another great option is to have one leg in front of the other so that when I curl my toes, you can see I'm on one knee and I can use the strength of my legs to lift up and stand. And that's all I have for you. Um, again, I hope your sciatica is happy and healthy today.